So the first step is to use four corner traction and stretch the scalp. Okay. And we're going to put this at the uppermost portion of the field that we're going to be harvesting. So we put the tensor in place, put our hand down, okay. and then use the elastic to keep it in position. I use a little bit of uh, fluid, tumescent fluid, in the very superficial uh, dermis. And what this does is it just gives the skin a little bit more stability. Now we take the robotic arm, and there are two lights that need to be in focus. And then when the red lights are one is superimposed upon the other, then we have enough position for the robot to take over. Now what the robot is using is um, a 3D um, imaging system to align the robot with parallel to the direction of the hair follicles. So we've programmed the robot to avoid the single hair follicular units. It's going for all the two and three hair follicular units. Uh, the reason why we do that is because it minimizes the amount of holes for, for the amount of hair that we want. So by um, avoiding the one hairs, we can use all the, the two and three hair grafts uh, for the transplant. Um, for the frontal hairline, we would take the larger follicular units and then divide them up microscopically. Uh, so in this way, we get the you know, the amount of grass we need by minimizing the amount of holes. The other thing, we have the robot uh, set up with a 0.9 millimeter punch on the surface. Again, what that does is minimize the wounding. The artist robot uh, is set up as a two-step procedure. The first uh, step is a 0.9 millimeter punch that scores the surface of the skin, and then once the skin surface is scored, it's rapidly replaced by a 1.1 millimeter blunt punch that goes deeper into the tissue. Uh, the reason for the two-step technique is the sharper instrument just pierces the skin, and then the, and then the deeper uh, uh, dissection is carried out by a more blunt instrument so it avoids transecting follicles. As you can see, the robot um, orienting itself for each follicular unit. The green uh, shows the, the active target, and the purple shows the, the next follicular unit that's going to be imaged and, and um, harvested. The reason why there's no bleeding um, is a combination of the, the adrenaline we put into the scalp, but mostly the action of the uh, tensioner, which uh, puts traction on the skin. And you can see uh, why it's so important to have the hair at um, less than one millimeter in length. Also, the the robot reads contrast between um, the skin skin color and hair color. So um, if someone has um, white hair, uh, they need to dye the hair uh, before the treatment, and it should be done the day before because the hair goes out. So we usually have the patient cut the hair short, um, dye the hair to make sure that the root is colored, and then we reclip the hair the morning of surgery. Okay, so what the operator will do is skip over areas where there's scarring um, and make slight adjustments to the depth um, if it's necessary, but the robot is pretty much uh, on autopilot at this point. And again, the green dots uh, indicate how many hairs are in each follicular unit. So you can see it's going for all the twos and threes. It's a skipping over follicular units that have only one hair. So now that the, so the robot just finished um, harvesting the first uh, grid. There were 109 uh, follicular unit grafts. 
The team is now using serrated forceps to remove the follicular units from the scalp. Um, these are going to be placed in a solution of Ringer's uh, lactate at room temperature and then immediately placed into chilled hypothermosol. Hypothermosol is a, is a, a medium that mimics um, the composition of intracellular fluid so you don't get fluid influx um, in the chilled environment. Okay, so once the first grid is finished uh, and the grafts are removed, we then uh, put the um, tensioner in a new position. Um, we'll place it actually just below the old grid. Okay, so we're now putting the tensioner on the, the second um, grid. We want to make sure that they're slightly overlapping so that you don't have a, a grid appearance um, after the harvest. Again, we apply the elastic straps, keep it in place. Um, we'll give it a little bit of tumescence to the area just to increase the rigidity. Okay. Okay, so we advanced the robot, so it's in position, and now what, what it's going to do is it's going to start to read the fiducials, which is the little dots around the perimeter of the, the tensioner, and that orients itself to the next grid. Once it's done that, it's going to start at the lower left corner aligning itself parallel with the follicular units, and then starting the harvest. Again, the reaction is very quick, but essentially what it's doing is it's first using a sharp punch that's 0.9 millimeters to score the skin, and then a 1.2 millimeter punch uh, to go deeper into the tissue. And that second punch is blunt, so it minimizes trauma to the follicles as it passes deeper into the skin.
Okay, so we just uh, finished uh, harvesting two grids, and you can see the way we've overlapped the grid so that this just forms one continuous uh, area of harvesting. The third grid is going to be placed uh, below the first two, and then we're going to uh, perhaps go to another fourth grid and then start with a new column. So the grids will overlap um, in the vertically, and they'll overlap as we move horizontally.